Right, and um, uh, many, including the Media Foundation for West Africa, have condemned the actions of Mr. Stan Dogbe, with some demanding his removal uh, from office. Uh, they described his action as shameful and has brought the presidency into disrepute. Although the chief of staff reportedly took up the matter, nothing has been heard or done about the incident almost uh, two days after the incident. Now, the situation also prompted the foundation for me, 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 the media foundation for West Africa to also uh, come in. And the current one we're witnessing is the the issue where 155 Ghanaian journalists have petitioned the country's president, John Dramani Mahama, uh, demanding that sanctions against one of his staffers, Stan Dogbe, who allegedly uh, assaulted a journalist on duty. Now, Mr. Dogbe, who handles communications at the presidency, reportedly assaulted and destroyed the voice recorder of Yahaya Kwamwa, a reporter with the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation, whom he accused of recording a private conversation. The incident was said to have happened at the 37 military hospital where victims of the presidential press corps accident, uh, uh, which eventually one journalist died, Samuel Yame, with the Ghanaian Times on August 20. And that was about two months ago. He's also come under uh, pressure over his criticism of an incident involving some journalists. Uh, there has been no accident. Uh, he he, tweet, he, he put, puts on Facebook that there has been no accident involving the Flagstaff House press corps or any vehicle from the Flagstaff House in the western region. The team with the president on his changing lives tour of the western region has long arrived in the central region. At least, as leader of the communications team on his trip, on this trip, none of the media houses engaged in this irresponsible report have contacted me or the Minister of Communications, Edward Omani Buama, to verify uh, this claim. And this is what happened uh, when the president visited the West he inaugurated a school, uh, one, the second school out of the 200 he promised during the 2012 elections. We'll try and get um, the Media Foundation for West Africa to speak more on it because we understand 152 50 journalists have currently signed a petition to have him uh, sanctioned, perhaps uh, removed or from office. So I will definitely try and get the Media Foundation for West Africa on what they make of it or whether they're pushing it uh, too much. We'll also talk about the uh, Public Utilities Regulatory Commission. Remember, it is engaging in stakeholder consultation on the increments. Utility companies want 200% increment, but the PRC says they must give them a satisfactory proposal or justify why they want the increment. The utility companies, the Ghana Water Company Limited, Volta River Authority, Electricity Company of Ghana, and the Ghana Grid Company Limited are asking for a more than 100% increment in tariffs. This has sparked huge public debate. Some consumers want increment scrapped. We are not okay with this. So we are appealing that if things will be possible, they should suspend it for at least the next one year. The debate is intense between providers and consumer rights advocates. Where's the light? It is not fair for you to ask me that I should pay up front before I get the services that I need. I think that is justified. Yes, we are standing by it because we want to have power reliable, power stable power. But Nanaya Jantua promised the commission would not agree to unreasonable upward adjustments. We need to be really satisfied. They really need to justify their increase before we consider anything. She, however, did not disclose when the consultations would be over. And we have been joined by the man who was asking the question, where is the light? Consumer Protection Agency uh, advocate he is uh, Mr. Kofi Kapi. So a very good evening there and thank you very much for joining us on News at 10. Um, we've had this conversation before and uh, the PURC rejected the earlier increment. They've come back again to do broader consultation and they have rejected. They want satisfactory. What will be satisfactory? Let me ask you a question. When you say they rejected, they didn't reject. They actually suspended it. They suspended the, the yes. So 
uh, out of, I think it was 50 something percent the last time. They have come So out. the top up is another 50 something percent that they are requesting. That is why we are looking at about 100 and is it 25 135 percent increase from the electricity or the power supply okay but water is over 200 percent yes yes all right so i'm saying so i'm asking what would be what would be satisfactory in your eyes you know it is difficult for me to say exactly what would be satisfactory in the sense that in any business uh, uh, the consumer only demands what is fairness. Uh, yes, I know that the utilities have actually uh, done a lot of uh, investments, uh, supposedly uh, come uh, next month, we, uh, naturally by December, we've been promised or we were promised by the minister for power that we will not be in the Jumso <laughs> era. But looking at the situation now, I doubt if we'll be out of Jumso. Mm -hmm. The question is, the percentages are a little too high. Okay. And even we've allowed them to be doing it for some time now. Okay. So the thing is right. I don't know any commodity in the world that is increased by 100 plus percent. We cannot allow this to happen. I'm happy that the PRC at least is listening to the voice of the people of Ghana. Uh, henceforth, they are saying that uh, they're not just going to roll over and accept anything put forward by the utility. Okay. If you ask me, since the last time they got about 50-something percent, maybe this time if they give, him, give them another 10 percent on top of the 50-something percent, it might be more acceptable to Ghanaians. Okay. But the real thing that Ghanaians want is for us to be over this doom so, doom so, and water situation in the country. Okay, all right. I will come back to the studio and lo look more at the issue. But we've been joined by the public relations officer with the PURC, Nana Yajan. So we're very good. <coughs> thank you so much for joining us on News at 10. All right, so we'll try and get her back on the line to talk more about the rationale behind it and what is the quantum of rejection of the increments that PURC, or what is the quantum that the PURC is rejecting? I will come back and talk more about that. But back, back, back to you saying that, for instance, if they are 10% to the earlier 57%, it may look a bit reasonable. Uh, we have Nanaya back on the line. I'm sorry, but we'll have to go on the phone. Line. Very good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. Good evening. How are you? All right. Um, uh, can you share with us the rationale behind the public consultation? It is a, a statutory condition that when the providers ask for a tariff increase and it's a major tariff review uh, season, then there's a the need to consult and do some public assemblies all over the country for the utility to present their request for a tariff adjustment to the public, for the public to interrogate it and also give their views on the proposals that the utilities have presented. Okay. I get people asking, when do they do that? Who gets invited? So how, how do you assemble people for these public... Uh... Everybody, everybody is invited. Everybody who so when do they know that the PURC is coming there? Because, I mean, we, ha we hardly, I, I'm in the mood, we hardly hear it. No, we, we, we have a way, we have regional offices, and they have a way of announcing to the people. In Tamale, we did a lot of announcements. Um, in Kumasi, we did announcements. And we had people coming in, general public groups, um, trade associations, market women, all over the place, students, consumers and customers alike. They all come. In South Mali, for instance, we had about 2,400 people coming to the forum. In, in Sunyani, they were about 700. Kuforidia, 400. Masi, they were about 600. So it's all over the country. Okay. What are consumers saying? What have you picked up with your, from your consultation? Uh, before I start, I want to say these are views. Great, great, great. That's, that's what yes. I'm asking. 
Hello, there's some feedback in your line. I can. Okay, uh, we'll try and work the phone lines. Remember, you can join us with your tweet. Uh, tweet at me, Bridget underscore O two or news at 10. You can also watch us on YouTube as well, and then we'll continue the discussion. And I have the line better. I'm afraid we've lost Nanaya. We'll try and get her back on the line to get more on what she's picking on the ground. I mean, the engagement. It's exciting that consumers are interested. And Tamale, they had about 2,400 people. What does that say about the consumer currently on what they want or how much they want to pay to these utility companies? I think the consumers are basically telling the PRC, who is supposed to be the regulator, uh, or the mediator between the utility providers and consumers who consume electricity is that, listen, uh, we want the light first. We want uninterrupted supply of electricity as it pertains in other jurisdictions. We don't want a situation that you ask me to pay more because we've been asked in the past that we should pay more and it's going to make it better. The argument this time that the utilities are putting forward is because of the injection of investments that they have, that they have made. Henceforth, the, the demand for them to come and ask for more. And I am of the view that if Ghanaians would enjoy, I'm talking about the whole country, okay, about six months of uninterrupted supply of electricity, uh, I'm not talking about things that are beyond, which is natural disaster. Sure, sure. But in other jurisdictions, they have sleep, they have storm and everything, and the light still stays yes, on. Yes, yes. In Ghana, just the blink of God, power will go off. <laughs> All right. Just on that <laughs> thought, uh, we'll go back to the phone line and speak to Nanaya. Nanaya, thank you very much for joining us, and we apologize for the break as well. Uh, can you share with us what consumers are saying, those you interacted with? They are saying various things. Some are saying that they don't mind the increase if the load shedding situation improves. Some are asking that we give them 50%. Some are saying give them 75%. Some are saying 30%. Some are saying 20%. Some are saying don't give at all. So these are all views that we are collecting. On the stakeholder side, we had a stakeholders meeting today with the experts. And they are saying unanimously that the utilities need an increase and they should be given. These are all views that we will bring on board and we will look at it when the final decision is being taken. Okay. But you, you have also you mentioned that you want them to give you a satisfactory proposal. So what would be satisfactory? When did I say that? Um, today on our news. No, really, I didn't say that. What I said was that we should be satisfied with whatever they are asking for. Okay. Not a satisfactory proposal. Okay. There's nothing like a satisfactory Okay, proposal. so what would satisfy the us, PURC? They should give us, we will interrogate every little detail of what they have sent to us. That is when the time comes. For now, all we are doing is that we are collating views. There okay. is a point where the utility service providers would present their case before a panel of commissioners. And that is when we will see that if they are justified in asking for what they are asking. At this point, the law does not enjoin us to make a comment. The law does not enjoin us to give our view. When the time comes for us to give our view, that is when we are going to make sure that whatever they are asking for is justified. All right. Nanaya Jantua, thank you very much for joining us here on News at 10. Uh, she's the public relations officer with the PURC. And you heard her. Uh, it, it looks as if at this moment the consumers, the power is in the hands of the consumers. Or you think that eventually we'll pay? Because for some, yes, we'll talk and talk, but eventually we'll pay. You know, uh, if I heard her right, she was talking about when they met the stakeholders today who are the manufacturers. I think she said they, had, they, had, they wanted or they said if they could get the power, they don't mind the increase. That's just those uh, 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 AGI uh, yes, and all uh, those uh, people. But the question is, he's a businessman. Whatever cost that he will incur, he'll push it on to you and I. So I don't, I don't have a problem with the people who are doing business with because a businessman will always push it on to the consumer. 
which is the end user. My issue is, yes, they are commercial people. They should look at their own thing. Okay, they are talking about they need cheap. Even they, they are requesting that they need a, they need a cheaper rate than residential. So how can they say if only they won't pass it on to you and I? Look, ECG, Ghana Water, uh, Gridco, VRA, they need to do internal auditing. Look, if you have any business, okay, or in finance, or in management, if you know your um, uh, um, um, uh, expense is more than your income, what do you do? Yes, you cut instance, down. Okay, for instance, the, the I believe the Ghana Water, for instance, is saying that you know they produce it at eight thousand eight. Is it eight cities and sell it they at one CD? One CD, they sell it at one, one they, well, they, they, Now they say they sell it at one, one CD, 78 pesos. Eight pesos, yes. And now they want four CDs yes, and change. Absolutely. But the question is, how do you justify from one CD, 78? Look, this argument that, oh, if we don't pay, the alternative is worse. It's just a fear tactic that they're trying to put into Ghanaians. There's no way. Even the most sophisticated countries in the world, I'm talking about the most capitalized or the most capital oriented countries in the world, do cushion consumers. When it, this is the two most important things that a person needs water and electricity. It, gone were the days that you could say that I don't need electricity because I live somewhere 30 miles out of Accra. Now, people who live a thousand miles out of Accra also needs electricity. It has become a necessity, the, the, the fact of life. You cannot even hear information if you want or you don't have electricity. Water is life. Okay, God in his own wisdom decided that we need light and then we need water. Okay, I'm not talking about the traditional, but you know, God's light is when the sun is out. Sure. So the issue is, look, this uh, telco has uh, uh, had a, a commercial. You know, the question the little boy so when they say, me Sarko, then he asks, oh, <laughs> Nessie can wear him. The question is, where is the light? Sure, sure. sure. Give us the light. Okay, if you give us the light. Yeah, but Kofi, co 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 consumers have a civic responsibility. Consumers are also partly to blame for some of the wastage in the system. If you have a burst pipeline, if you're tapping, doing illegal connection. Can I tell you, if you talk about illegal connection, I agree with you. But you talk about the best. Oh, you pipe. can report. They are not in our communities. No, but the question is if you have made it to your point to go to any district office of Ghana Water, or even you see a power line down and you go to the ECG office, what else can you do? Okay, can you fix the broken pipe? No. <laughs> you, you know you've seen burst pipes for weeks, sometimes months. So because your own inefficiencies, you've actually allowed millions of gallons to go and you couldn't collect the revenue, you are going to impose it on me? No, that is your inefficiency. Okay, people should be held accountable. Like I said, I have seen water pipe burst when it is 10 degrees below zero and you have workers working in that freezing in Ghana. I mean, for crying out loud, electricity, does, the, the maintenance don't work even 24 hours. You call them after 12 o'clock, they will tell you the linemen are going home. Go to other jurisdictions. And no, like I said, they do deserve some increase. Sure. Because uh, everything is being increased in Ghana. There's no, let's not lie to ourselves. But the question I want to ask is the percentage. Okay. It is too much. They are talking about, they are trying to curtail illegal connections. Sure. They're trying to do certain things. That, that you agree with. Them, I agree right? with. Especially the consumers should learn the life of conservation. Okay. Okay. Because that would actually save you money. Even, even if, let's assume that either it goes up or it comes down. You still save money if you conserve. That is a responsibility of the consumer to learn how to conserve. You don't leave your lights on when you don't need the lights. Okay. Okay. All these things is, the, is, is in the realm of the consumer. But what I am saying is, if you go to Dana Water right now, mm -hmm. their headquarters, go and see, it's been renovated. They have brand new vehicles. If you don't have money, would you go and buy paint to paint your house? 
they have their own internal issues they need to deal with. Look, a gentleman, uh, 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 one of the Ewadakon boys, he's a MD for Bost and he's now the acting MD for Tor. When he went there, what do you know what he did? He told the workers, it's either, no, he said, it's either you are laid off or, or you take a paycheck, a, a, a pay cut, then we, we could we could fix it and pay our fix debts. it and pay our debt and then when I the think profit that's actually comes, fantastic from but Paul. how many leaders in Ghana are doing that? How many directors are doing that? In other jurisdictions, you see that all the time. Car manufacturers will do the same thing. Every manufacturer will tell you that for you to sustain your job, help me and I'll help you. Okay. Are we saying that is the CEOs taking a, a pay cut? No. But they want you and I to pay. Like I'm saying, if I consume, I need to pay. But that does not give you the right to overcharge me. The question is, there are workers. Some of them are their own issues. They need to deal with them. Even the delivery of their bills and the collection of the bill. It's only in Ghana that you go to give somebody money and the person <laughs> is bluffing you. Come on now. I'm yeah. coming to give you money. You should make it as easy as possible for me to come there today, okay. tomorrow, and next month. But the question is, when I come and somebody is bluffing me, you think I will go? These things, I think they need to improve, especially the bill delivery. And let me also give them a piece of advice. And I think if PRC is going to consider, I personally think the duration that the bill is sent and the time that one has to pay, I think is too long. It is too because you pay a month. <laughs> I, I, and, a and month time, behind. Thank you. Yes, you always say, you're like a month behind. Yeah, no, a, a month lot behind. of you, a lot of you are sending us uh, your thoughts on this. And uh, uh, Boniface <coughs> Biney says we can't pay money for poor service being rendered to us. And uh, also can come. Your boy says um, tariff issues. I wonder if Ghanaians know how much the IPPs are paid compared to what the VRA and ECJ are given. You might want to find that out and how consumers are affected by the difference in the end. It's public utilities who will suffer. And that's from Kankam in Takoradi, I believe. Uh, what's the point of us paying bills to utilities that we don't even enjoy, especially electricity? And that's from Saidu Lucas. And also from Idris, Idi Kamara says, increasing the tariff is not the solution. It should give us a quality service before we appreciate their efforts. But it's not enough. And that's from Idris there. All right. So those are some of yeah, your comments the on Twitter. Send the text about, are we looking at what the independent power, 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 power producers It's a fact. Yeah. I, I know yeah. of the fact that yeah. all, this, come, come. Yeah. all these things is because we are trying to uh, 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 encourage and entertain independent okay. power providers. Oh. Look, some of them are charging 25 pesos more than what VRA is demanding okay. or what Greco. I mean, so we should look at it. It is a very important point, that he's, point there. He's very are we allowing this to go on because some foreigner or some Ghanaian has gone to borrow money and he needs to make... We behave as if when you borrow your money, you should get your Money back in 24 hours. Yes, but that's but that's how we are running businesses in this country. Actually, <laughs> even uh, the private sector, uh, the informal sector. That's how we're running the business. But it's your agenda. You get to call in and share with us your thoughts on the current development. The PURC is going, you know, regions. They've already been to Tamale. They had 2,400 consumers turn up and share their concerns. So you can also call in and tell us where you're there. What do you make of the current development? Your agenda is coming up. And the number to call is 0302-763-450. Um, Katie Abua says, do not link increment to capacity. Increment in, increase in tariffs won't increase capacity or reduce doom so. But people want doom so to end. That's a fact. So people want doom so to end. You can call us on 0302. We have Alhaji and he's calling us from Tamale. Hello, Alhaji. Good evening. Where you are the forum, or forum by the PRC? Hello. Hello, Alhaji. Yes, you're on air. 
first of all, I want to turn the personality in the God will reward. Coffee you. Capito, yes. Okay, go ahead. I heard about having that meeting in Tamale that about 2,000 or something people attending it and share their views. I wish you, you, your mom there was there to see the kind of people they invited. <laughs> share with us, why, were you present? Were you there or you heard? I was there in my Okay, so there. tell us, what, what the did you... The information we had before we attend the meeting, so it, it said that we are, we are organizing youth to come and we don't even know what we are going there for. It was there, a lot of us get to know that we are there. Okay. So what did you hear? How did you hear of it? It was, we get the information to friends from by our youth group. Okay. And what happened when you got there? When we went there, in fact, when they were even discussing the main issues, it's 50% or more than 50% of the public there was not even interested in what they are even saying. <laughs> All right. So, so the PUFC, And I told right? my friend that what they are doing here, very soon we the poor will suffer. Okay. Because a man in talk there, his salary and everything will increase. But you living in the place without a salary and everything, how are you going to pay? Even the one we are even paying now, it's even hard for us. All right. Thank you. Thank so you very much. Consider the poor people too. And All right. I mean, all right. Thank you very much, Alahaji. I believe that's why they are doing the consultation, broader consultation. Uh, we have Nana and Kuma uh, calling us from Kumasi. Hello, Nana. Hello, Nana. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, Nana and Kuma, were you at the forum? Yeah. I, I... Were you there? No, no, no. I'm speaking from... Uh, but go ahead. Go ahead with your thoughts. No, no, no. Oh, I think uh, uh, consumers new services from the utility agency, and we wouldn't mind paying more. And okay. then again, you should also consider the percentage. I now on the issue of the voters register, I want to go with the. Um. All right. So that's it. We're not talking about voters register. Thank you very much for calling us and sharing your thoughts on the tariffs. Uh, please call us and stick to the issues that we're discussing. We have Abdul Fatal uh, calling us. Hello, Abdul. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Hi, Abdul. It's Madam. I'm, I'm Bridget. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank right. you very much. They, they said they met some people and discussed about the increment of the... This. What about the we poor people at the villages? More, you know, we have more villages and small, small towns than big cities. Where are you? What? Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Bojasi. Bojasi. Okay. Yes. All right. <coughs> Go um, ahead. Go ahead. And they said they met so many people. What about the uh, population at the villages? We, the villages, we, the workers and the farmers uh, in the villages. How do we get money to pay the light bill and the water bills? Okay. If right. our crops are not yielding more. Okay. Are you a farmer? Pardon? Are you a farmer? Yes, I, I, I'm a uh, small farmer. Okay. I'm farming small, small, but not uh, in a large Life quantity. Scale. Okay. All right. Okay. But thank you, Abdul Fatal, for letting us know. I'm sure the PURC are watching us and they will take that into consideration and go to the remotest, not just the capital cities of the country, but the remotest of areas where a uh, farmer, small scale farmer like Abdul, uh, can be reached and then their voices as well are factored into whatever their concerns may be. You can also call in a 0302. Seven six three four five zero. We're going to hold now. We have Francis. Hello, Francis, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you so very much for the opportunity. Go on. Yeah, to be frank, I am seriously scandalized about this URC even trying to consider this utility uh, providers. Okay. Why? The reason why I'm saying this is that we don't know the benefit that we are deriving from paying them this kind of tariff. Don't you get water? Sorry? Don't you get water? Does water not flow? Oh, it, it, at times, it does not flow the way you are expecting it. <laughs> Instead of these service providers who are in charge of these institutions to make sure they assign people to be doing regular or routine checks, they don't do it. The only thing is that they only sit in their comfort zone to demand that they should increase their tariffs then they go back to organize management meetings 
to decide how much they are going to pay themselves as salary. Okay. Go and see the fat, fat, fat salary that they are paying themselves. I will be very privileged even if a nurse will go to some of these tariff institutions to check how much this uh, uh, management uh, uh, workers they are paying themselves. All right, I believe that, would, that wouldn't be right if they are not doing anything illegal. All right, Francis, thank you. Thank you very much. I think your point is well made. Thank you very much for joining us. We're taking a break. We'll come back and talk about uh, Stan Dugwe, uh presidential staffer, and his comments on Facebook. Uh, did he push it, uh, or are people just being so uh, unrealistic and just, you know, pushing him to the wall and just calling for his head, really, when he doesn't deserve it? We'll be right back to talk more on the subject. Stay with us here. We're live on tv3 a very big thank you to my guest in the studio here on uh on let, let me get your thoughts on it what do you think about stand up with comment no comment no comment why that we have 150 journalists uh signing saying that they think he was insensitive to the plight of the journalists whether they are presidential press corps or not he should have handled it better. you know what my advice is when you're giving some power or some responsibility. Respect people. Sure. It reminds me of Koku and Yudoho. He should be careful. <laughs> okay. I mean, Stan Dogbe has been in the media lately. And it's unfortunate that in this part of the world, that people make comments and they're still at post. In other jurisdictions, you make such a slight comment like that, you'll be taken off. Because guess what? We have 26 million people in Ghana. If it's about media or the presidential, uh, 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 what's it called, the, uh, the, P, uh, the media, the, me uh -huh. the media, for crying out loud, was Stan Dogbe the MD or, or a director of any station <laughs> that he worked? You see, these things that we do, it's not about politics. It's about Ghana working. I want Ghana to work. I want people who are given opportunity to respect Ghanaians, this power gets into people's hands. Like I said, it reminds me of Goku okay. and Yudo and Stan Dogbe should be very, very careful. When people, when you have opportunity, and it, it is opportunity, and a privileged. Sure. This is what people should understand. Okay, I've met some people in government and they are good people. You go there, they let you know that they are there because of you. Then you have other people who behave or misbehave. Okay. Okay. As if they will be there forever. All For right. crying out loud. Even the president of Ghana, inshallah, if he gets another turn in four years, he's gone. Sure. So? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Kofi Capito. Uh, Consumer Protection Agency, always talking for the consumer. Thank you very much. And it's always a pleasure to have you in our studio. And Thank always you. humble to have you in Thank our you. studio as well. Uh, we're taking a break. We're back to talk more on Stan Dogo. He wasn't going to comment, but he ended up commenting. So, yeah, stay with us here. We're back with more. <laughs>